I really had very little to offer Norman, apart from 15,000 acres and a house in Belgravia. And an account of Peter Jones and 80,000 a year of my own silly little self. I do enjoy a marmalade. Felicity removes the bits for me. Some of my softer colleagues purchase their marmalades with the peely bits previously removed. I say no. One has to have someone remove the bits on site. And, and then later in the year, I dry them. And I make them into a, a lovely sort of necklace thing, which um, we then auction for charity. It's really rather super. <laughs> Felicity was a superlative class of lady. And uh, my brother was a very lucky man to marry her. Roo! <laughs> Don't worry, Scruffy. Daddy's not going to get married. Roo! Ever. Roo! I promise. What attracted you to Felicity in the first place? What attracted you to Felicity in the first place? <laughs> What attracted you to Felicity? You know, I, I've always made a very firm principle never to answer questions of a hypothetical nature. Would you like a cup of tea? Good Lord. Oh, this one's new on me. Oh, it's when I first stood for the Conservatives, testing the safe Welsh Labour seat of North Marquis Valley in 1959. No, no, your conservative candidate. Salt of the earth. Charming baby. And, and they took me to their hearts. You see, I made the effort to speak their language. The crying holocron! Marvellous ordinary folk. Prepared to give you their last scraps, even if it meant doing without. I'm proud to claim many of them as my lifelong friends. Good day to you, sir. Now you can see the rapport. And there's Felicity. Every inch the little wife. The lovely things over there. You know, Felicity, it's a remarkable woman. Battling with demons. You know, they count spoons. We always carry a little bit of North Mucky Valley around with us, close to our hearts. Norman was convinced he'd take the seat, but sadly only a couple of hundred of the North Muckers took him to their hearts. <laughs> and he lost his deposit. Bless. <laughs> he set his heart on trying to find a safer seat on which to stick his arse. Of course, the safest seat in the country was Old Wealth on Sea, but that was jealously held by Felicity's father, Sir John Prefuha. <laughs> And who I had no intention of jacking. As senior cabinet member, he had his eyes on the top job. It was 1963, I think, and um, Norman thought it would be jolly to spend the weekend with Daddy. And uh, Norman arrived with this chum of his who I'd never met before, a lovely girl called Mandy Rice Pudding. And um, she, she was a sport, she was a good sport. And she really made a fuss of Daddy. To this day, I have no idea how that film ended up in the hands of the newspapers. The puff hoo ha hoo ha. No, 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 no. Sitting on England's safest seat, Sir John thought his arse was pretty comfortable. But no seat's comfortable when you've just been buggered by your own sign law. Daddy never really recovered, and um, he shot himself, which was really rather sad. Ah, oh, he fought the 64 election tooth and nail. He was always a body fighter. <laughs> with an old saying where I come from, never help an old lady across the street, she might slice head off with machete, and he was always on the lookout for that old lady. But let's say no more about it. In 1967, Felicity gave birth to the Ormel's only child, a daughter, Normana. Norman insisted right from the start that it would be much better for Normana's character if she were to take an active role in politics. Which was really rather super. It was outrageous behaviour and wouldn't happen today, of course. 
Not since my Criminal Justice Act made it illegal for more than three students to gather together on a pavement at any one time. I think it must have been the early 70s, and Norman was doing perfectly well in the health ministry. In that general body massage sort of way. As junior minister for health, I wish to draw your attention to the perils that may lurk in the public playground. Take this swing, for instance. Looks pretty safe for little Normana, doesn't it? Aha! But is it? Just as I thought. Loose. Loose and rusty screws. Now let's try this swing. No, no, no. Anyway, a certain flair for publicity. But of course. You think well, the other way is perhaps not as statesmanlike as one would wish. The health scare over dog food is totally unfounded. I have complete faith in the British pet food industry. Ah, oh, but you're simply panting to go the whole hog and get into the cabinet. They well, told me his plan: attack a senior minister who's quite obviously a complete no hoper, and give them a thorough shafting. You have to go and shoot the wrong bloody minister. Arse. I yield to no one in my respect for Mrs. Dennis Thatcher, but she should go back to warming her husband's slippers and leave the real politician the job of giving back to our grateful children their milk. Oh, a monumental cock up. On the other hand... And as we await the results of the Tory leadership ballot, it looks like being a close-run thing, with few votes to count between Mr Edward Heath and Mrs Margaret Thatcher. If I may turn to you, Norman Ormel, you voted for whom? That's quite correct. Good evening, Sue. In the Conservative Party, we traditionally remain loyal to our leader. So you're remaining loyal to Mr Heath? With respect, Sue, that's not what I said. I said we remain loyal to our leader. So Mr Heath can't count on your loyalty? That's not what I said. I said Mr Heath has my undivided loyalty up until that time when he ceases to be able to command it. Mrs Thatcher may well be a breath of fresh air. Breath of fresh air. So you support her now, even though Mr Heath may win through? Uh, forgive me, Sue. A breath of fresh air may not be necessary at this particular moment in time. Sometimes it's better to opt for air that may be a little less fresh. What, air that's a bit foggy? Thermostat set to what? 23, 24? No fresh air whatsoever. Uh, I enjoy a warm room, but with a certain amount of fresh air circulating. Extra blankets? Uh, I'm not prepared at this stage to rule out the use of extra blankets if Hold that's on. needed. Hold on, Mr Ormel. I'm just being informed that Margaret Thatcher has won. Mr Ormel, your reaction? Uh, last week and break the stifling mugginess of the... He fear uh, out of our system. Yeah, but strong. only last year, Mr Ormel, you resigned from the Cabinet, saying later, and let me quote you directly, the bitch is mad. No, so, 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 you're quoting me out of context here. Margaret's always welcome. Very vigorous debate. A little deft backtracking was in order, I fancy. You could feel the juices running in the conference hall whenever Norman got up to speak. It was as if he'd thrown us all ever so ruggedly onto a big brass bed, padlocked our wrists to bedposts, covered us all in... Labour say there's no magic answer to rising crime! Wrong, Mr Callaghan. How do we solve crime? Just like that! Speakers are fine and that lot were magnificent. They were thinking the unthinkable and speaking the unspeakable. At one point, even unspoke the thinkable. And <laughs> believe you me, that takes goods. My brother was a superlative speech maker. Roo, 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 roo. Yes, Scruffy, so are you.